Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're working on the uh, 2020 Chevy Suburban and kind of finish up the service on this after purchasing. Uh, I've already completed the uh, front, front and rear differential, transfer case and engine oil. Uh, now it's time to tackle the transmission. So this vehicle has about 60,000 miles on it and um, we're gonna get into the transmission and do a fluid exchange on it. Uh, using a, uh, a device that I put together for uh, drain and refill uh, that I've used on some of my other sealed transmissions, you know, namely Toyotas. So what we have today for parts, we've got our transmission filter. This is a GM part that we're going to use, OEM. Uh, I'm using a Superior Solutions product uh, by Shift Technology Products part number STL010. This is a transmission cooler uh, bypass and it, it bypasses the thermostat that's that's put into these trucks that uh, can uh, stick or doesn't really open up until the transmission fluid gets really hot and um, this this allows that that fluid to flow at all times and also includes a check ball bypass in case the the cooler is blocked or it's uh, really cold and the fluid is having difficulty flowing through, it will bypass the cooler and be able to continue to lubricate the transmission as it's running. So we're going to give this a go. It's gotten pretty good reviews online. Uh, currently, now this is July 2022 and uh, transmission temperature is just driving around town, not even hauling or or going on the highway or anything like that, any kind of long trips or towing. I'm already getting in the, the 190s uh, for a transmission temperature. So looking to try to reduce the, the temperature there. Also I've got several gallons here of AMSOIL, uh, the fuel efficient ATF. This is the ATL uh, product code. This does meet the Dexron 6, which is what this vehicle requires. So, you know, anytime that transmission temperature spins at an elevated temperature, it shortens its life. And so we are uh, going to do what we can to keep that cool and try to save the transmission fluid, which will save the transmission, hopefully, and make it last a lot longer. The other piece that I have here is a product by ICT Billet. This is a, um, essentially, it's a, it's a new termination point for the transmission coming out of the transmission. Uh, it has a couple of adapters that are machined to insert into the transmission uh, at the cooler lines and then kind of converts it over to an AN fitting. I'm going to use this as part of my setup for the drain and fill to make sure we can get a full, a full exchange uh, of the transmission fluid. So it's, this is just basically an adapter uh, to be able to hook up to some fluid lines that go into my, my drain and fill system. Uh, in the future, I could, you know, could use this if I want to bypass the factory cooler altogether, the lines and everything, and run my own AN uh, lines out to a auxiliary cooler, but that would probably be a later date. So those are the parts we're going to be working with. I also have a gasket uh, in case it's needed, but um, it's supposed to be a reusable gasket, so I'm going to save that in just in case there's a, any damage to the existing one. Okay, so first thing we have is uh, we've got the, the truck up on ramps. We're gonna get under underneath and work on the, uh, the pan. You know, this, uh, the, this pan is notorious for being difficult to remove. So we're gonna give that a go and see if there's any other ways other than what's out there online to try to remove uh, the transmission pan. Also, we'll be getting into the, the cooler, disconnecting the cooler thermostat so we can go into that and uh, replace the internals with the shift uh, shift technology products uh, bypass kit. All right, we are under, under the vehicle. So here's the transmission pan. Here, there's a little magnet on the inside that we're going to inspect once we get this down. And that'll be a besides the transmission fluid color, will be an indicator of sort of the health transmission how much metal shavings or 
touch material, filings, anything that's magnetic uh, will stick to it. So you know, get an idea of how much uh, wear we've got so far. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is kind of spray it down a little bit. It's pretty clean already, but we'll go ahead and spray it down. And uh, get some brake cleaner and get it ready to go. Okay, so we got the pan totally loose now. All bolts out. Next step is to try to remove. There's still a decent amount of oil in here. So I'm gonna try to not make a total mess. filter in here. Should be just a twist and pull.
All right, folks, there's proof. There's proof you do not need to be jacking up your transfer case or pulling down on your exhaust to get the pan off. You likely will have to pull the filter in order to get it, get it out. So not a big deal. You have to reinstall the new filter kind of in the pan and push it up in there. I didn't want to be doing any of the jacking up transfer case isn't necessarily a problem but I did not want to be pulling down on the exhaust as a lot of people do online to get the pan off because they're doing that in order to save having to unbolt the manifold connections because they could get you know heat affected and rusted on and don't want to come off I've run into that before um, but you also don't want to be pulling down on it super hard because you're just all that force is going into your exhaust manifolds which can crack too or so that's not a, I didn't really want to go that route. So if you get the filter out, um, I didn't really have to mess with this. I was going to take this bracket off, but it ended up not really having to do it. And if anything, I probably just made it worse, made my clearance worse by taking these lines out of the bracket. But I'll leave those out for now because I'm going to be working on the cooler. Um, but that's it. We're able to get it out without having to do any, any craziness. Just need to kind of finagle around this corner, this back passenger, rear passenger side corner in order to get it out. But if it is a, it does look like a piece of plastic right there. Yeah, it's a piece of plastic back there. I want part of that valve body assembly, the solenoid assembly. Um, so yeah, you really don't want to be cranking on that real hard, but I didn't really have to to get it out. So uh, that's a success. So now we'll go work on the pan, get it cleaned up, get the gasket surface cleaned up, get the gasket cleaned up, uh, inspect that, and then we'll start putting it back together and then get it. Okay, so we finally got the pan out and showed you guys how to, how to do that without having to do anything with the exhaust or with the uh, transfer case lifting up or pulling down in order to get it off. Um, those cooler lines didn't seem, really seem to be a problem either. I think the, the real trick is getting the filter out and then just doing some rotating and moving around that, that back passenger side corner in order to get the, uh, get the pan out. So no, no, big, no big deal there, which was great. I was really kind of concerned about having to do that. Uh, so now here we are, we have the pan, which uh, oil, oil looks pretty worn, I'd say, you yeah, know, it's pretty worn, but I don't see, there's no chunks and actually the, um, the magnet looks pretty, looks pretty good. It's not really covered. Um, I would say that's probably about normal for 60,000 miles of use. Okay, so here's the pan again. Oil's, oil's pretty worn, definitely not pink. Uh, definitely seen a lot of heat. And then here's the, the magnet. Get that out. Not too, not too bad. I'd say that's normal. All right, so next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna dump out the rest of this uh, and get the pan cleaned up, and then we'll get out the new filter and clean up the gasket. I got the gasket here, and the old filter. Let's look at the old filter. see if there's anything to see there so no no real debris down in the uh, in the inlet there everything looks looks pretty good I don't see anything dramatic so that's good shows we still have a pretty good unit uh, gasket just need to clean that up with some brake cleaner get the dirt and the oil off otherwise that one's good to go too all right we'll get this cleaned up I'll uh, do, use some brake cleaner just clean the surface off there's no need to apply any RTV or scrape or anything uh, with these like you used to have to do with paper gaskets or, uh, or using no gasket um, where you'd have to use RTV. So I'm glad that uh, we finally moved to a, uh, an elastomer seal uh, and it's reusable too, which is great. All right, so we'll get this cleaned up and then we'll get started on the, the reinstall.
right, so the trick to getting this pan off and on is to come at it from a clockwise direction with the corner right around the middle of the case. No gasket, no filter. Slide it back and then you can kind of wiggle it in. and then you can let it hang and we'll get the filter in and then the gasket here's our new filter Now, so it goes in nice and smooth. Push it up in there. back there on the back of it that goes in between a couple of, a couple of ports. All right. After that's in, next step is the gasket. Just slide in without cruising.
hint, there's a locator on the case and on the pan. So I'll get them both. Get them both in there good. Torque wrench, get these torqued up, and we start filling her up again. All right, we're going to torque each of these 10 millimeter bolts to 80 inch pounds. Got the wrench set. We're going a star pattern. We'll fill it up, measure how much we took out, and put about that much back in, and then start the, uh, the fluid exchange. If you don't want to do a fluid exchange, that's, that's kind of the end. Um, we'll get, get the fluid back in, check the level. Uh, when it's cold, check, and then you run it up to temp, check it when it's hot. Um, I'm going to be doing an exchange on this, so we'll cover that uh, as well. Step where we're going to start refilling the transmission with new oil. We've got the pan back on, new filter on, pan's torqued. <clears throat> got to fill it back up with fluid. So I'll give a little tip here. I see a lot of folks when they're putting in when they're putting in oil, they'll just take a, a big jug like this and they'll start pouring like that. And they're actually designed pour from the opposite direction and that way you're able to get a much better angle on it before the oil starts coming out so you can see I'm almost getting fully vertical before it comes and I can I can control the flow a whole lot better and it's not gurgling like if you had it flipped around A little single quart oil cans, oil bottles with the offset top are kind of for the same same thing, same purpose. So we're going to fill it in via the dipstick. Drips. 
once you get it, you know, mostly empty, you can flip it around. No problem. So we're going to put in enough fluid to get it up to the full cold. And then we'll start doing the exchange. 